here we are, party people's internet lands, internet city. I don't know where you are. You could be on internet town, internet mm. village, <laughs> for all I know. Uh, it's going to be a good one. It's a Thursday night. We are here recording the podcast. Uh, this is number 224 of the Whatnots Captain's Log. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by melissa wilkinson melissa how are you i'm doing fine it's been oh i just worked all week i we've got the Typical cinema week. corners in our our document of topics every week they're just there as permanent headings we add new stuff as we watch it i've had no time to watch new things i just did homework uh, and then worked a lot <laughs> you you we, we are recording on a thursday because you picked up an extra quiz yes uh sh shift uh thing so that's that's always uh i mean it's it's okay for for us because we're a little bit flexible on when we record yeah. but it's neat. like i'm i'm glad that you're picking up that stuff um it's good good stuff good fun stuff yeah good fun stuff the the venue i was subbing at for a trivia was the local alamo draft house theater in their mm -hmm. bar area and they had a projector set up that was at this time when I was there, it was just playing sci-fi channel. I don't know what they have playing on it at other times. I don't know if it's exclusively TV, if they play a sport, if they put like cool movies on there or something. Don't know. Right. But when I was there, it was one of the Harry Potter movies was playing on the sci-fi channel. They're not just for free form anymore. You can find them on sci-fi, too. And I'm busy getting everything set up. I got my microphone. I got my mixer. I've got all the trivia prizes. And I glance up and Dobby is dead. Harry Potter Ooh. is holding a lifeless Dobby in his arms. You spoiled the books, Melissa. <laughs> well, at least you did say like, like Dumbledore like, dies on page like 684 yeah. or whatever it was. <laughs> I'd I'd rather see any other character die except for poor lifeless like uncanny looking little Dobby. Yo, like a, any Dobby. of the human characters dying, that's just like Michael Gambon laying still. <laughs> like I don't want to see dead Dobby. Him least of all. They had to animate him lifeless. They had they had uh, to animate I him. I don't like that. Being hopeless, being just no. a, a bunch Ugh. of matter. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. That well, visual effects team calls themselves the necromancers because they <laughs> animate the dead. <laughs> hey, that that would be a great name for like a, a studio that like likes to work on like zombie <laughs> fiction or zombie <laughs> video games or, or stuff, right? Necromancer Studios. Um there you go. <laughs> That's fun, though. That's fun. Uh, well, I, I should mention right off the bat here every week here on the podcast. Of course, we thirst for the taste of L L legend. And Melissa, I did something really fun this past w weekend. You've been I, teasing been it for a couple of weeks for a while. Uh, it's 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 like I, I, I have not given you any sort of clue. As to None. what this is, but I want to know at first what you think <laughs> that this secret, these secret plans could have been. I I have been wondering if it is just a general surprise for content, or if it's something that's like specific to us. Like mm -hmm. you took a tour of the Mountain Dew factory, you went to some, you found your local Fast and Furious just a drag race trip to, to, to the local <laughs> Mountain Dew factory, <laughs> right? I was like, what if you went to a fun, like, themed burlesque show that's themed after, like, something we talk about? Like, you went to go see Ass and Furious? <laughs> the Ass and the Furious. <laughs> that would I've be thought fun. about a lot fun. of things. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, you did just get a small minor clue as you were ta talking. Melissa, I took a sip from my uh, handy oh! dandy nifty cup here. <gasps> Monster trucks! Monster trucks! Monster Melissa, I trucks! I went to Monster Jam. <laughs> oh my god! How many were there? How did they jam? 
they they jammed they they did the monster mash they did all of it um no th the desk was neat the desk was something that my girlfriend actually wanted to go go, go, go to to and had been mentioning like multiple times i'm just oh. like i like one day bucket list like i would love to go <laughs> see some monster trucks and Beautiful. i was I, like yeah i was just like okay i've not really thought about monster trucks since i was in like elementary school but that's okay why not that'd be fun and then when we were at one of the the Oklahoma City Thunder basketball gig games, we we got there before the game started. And one of the like advertisements up on the big jumbo charon was Monster Jam coming to OKC. And I was just like, it's a sign we have to, to go. <laughs> and this was like back in November when we saw, saw that. Um, and so, yeah, we just had we were like keeping it in the back of our minds of like it's happening in February. And I was like, it's Valentine's Day weekend. Like we we have to go as like a Valentine's Day Day, day, day thing. Uh, and we did. Oddly enough, like a month and a half ago or two months ago, one of the podcasts that I listened to, one of the hosts also went to Monster Jam. As, same thing as as me, like had never been, did not know what to ex expect um, and, and just like came back raving about it. He was like, this is so fun. It was awesome. So, I, yeah, are, are you are you looking up the website I am. right now? I'm I'm going to now that you've mentioned up on on screen too here. Somebody uh, else has gone there. Now I got to see like what's the Monster bam. Jam schedule with a Monsters Jam near me. Yeah, I'm sure they have all sorts of uh events all over the place. Well, they 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 they, they, they do. I you know that they do. But um yeah, this it, it was really really neat to go. Uh it was in the Oklahoma City Thunder like basketball stadium so that was an interesting experience to have the whole like i mean they they had the court the court like moved out like that was all taken apart and and not visible the floor is just completely covered in dirt they have this like dirt big giant mound in the center that has had like all these different ramps on them and and stuff like that um yeah it 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 was a blast. We got there like right as they started. Uh, they started out doing some racing um, and then immediately went into like different trick competitions. Uh, like, a, I mean, it, like the whole thing, like imagine like the competitions and stuff that they do, that they do for like ice skating of, of oh. like you have like, a like two minute freestyle, right? And they did that or, you know, they have races and and stuff like that. But it, it was a blast. It was super family friendly. There were tons of kids there. <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I was like I, ex expecting there to be kids, but the, yes. this was like a lot more than I was expecting. For kids sure. love monster trucks. I would they be sure shocked do. if you told me this was a adults only monster truck <laughs> I, I, I Where mean, the hey, monster I, trucks I, I get to, to say that. fuck and show a boob. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> no, uh, but it, yeah, there were, I want to say like eight different trucks there. I'm going to look at the trucks. Yes. Who are uh, our trucks? Who, let's introduce the players. So we didn't get to see all of them. There's obviously a lot more tr trucks on this website uh, than the ones I mentioned. Um, Kyle, I have to I have to stop you right here and name every truck. This <laughs> there, is my you know, this is my here. favorite thing to do is to just read a long list. <laughs> the trucks that you could see at Monster Jam include Alien Ava Invasion, Avenger, Axe, Bad Company, Bad News Travels Fast, Bakugan Dragonoid. Yep. Some Black anime Pearl. cans there. <laughs> Blue Thunder, Brutus, Dragon, Earthshaker, El Toro Loco, Grave Digger, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior. That one's got a sponsorship. Yep. Hooked, 
Hot C, Jester, Jurassic Attack, Just Get Her Done, there Kraken, Lucas Stabilizer, Max D, Megalodon. This one's shaped like a shark. Monster Mutt, shaped like a dog. Mm-hmm. Monster Mutt Dalmatian and Monster Mutt Rottweiler, different yep. breeds. Yep. Overboard, Pirate's Curse, Rage, in all capital letters. Raminator, Ramunition, Rockwell Red, just Scooby Doo. Yep, just Scooby Doo. A monster truck. <laughs> Shaker, Soldier Fortune, not Soldier of Fortune. First yep. name Soldier, last name Fortune. Soldier <laughs> Fortune, Black Ops, Son of a Digger, Stone Crusher, Terminal Velocity, Thunder Roarus, Velociraptor, yep. Vendetta, Whiplash. Wild side, Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. Wrecking Machine, and Zombie. I'm happy we've got an inexplicably feminine car in here. So, yeah, there's a lot of cars on on here. Some of the ones that I saw. Uh, let me go through this list again. Here, I saw Earth Shaker, El Toro Loco, Grave Digger, Hotzi. Uh, let's see what else I saw Megalodon I saw the, the, the shark looking oh, thing on there uh, I saw Monster Mutt Dalmatian um, what else did we see there I did not get to see Scooby Doo unfortunately oh, oh um, man I did get to see Velociraptor and I believe that was it I believe that's all yeah um, so quite like a, a good handful of them here but that's partly what's so amazing to me is that like i w- i was picturing maybe more like the nascar crowd right like that like yeah that's why i was not expecting as many kids right I, I, like just like sure i like I, I was expecting some kids but i was expecting it to be more adults and just kind of drunk p- people just being like, yeah, cars, fuck yeah. Um, and and it, it it was it was a family affair for sure. Another thing that surprised me is that there were like three of the like eight d- drivers that were women. Uh, Rad. Th- there. Yeah. Again, n- not that that's a bad thing. That's a fantastic thing. Just w- wasn't expecting that. Like I was expecting right. this to be like macho cars and or what, what right? I, just the whole thing was neat. It, like it, it was, it was a blast. Um, I cannot say enough good things. If you, if it's in your town, go check it out. Why not? Um, it 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 seems like what they do is they have different um like monster jams around the country and each in each one, the trucks compete against one another ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, and they are scoring points, all of the, the that stuff. Um, and as they travel around the country and compete at different places, they are competing for the like monster jam nationals. Um, and then there wow. is like a, a bigger one uh, that is like in a more like open space, more room, all that good stuff. Unfortunately, we did not get to see any cars get smashed or jumped on. Um, that was the one thing that I was kind of hoping for. Right. Some like big jump yeah. and it, like, barely makes it and smashes a car. Did not get to see that. Um, but I did get to see Grave digger do a backflip uh which was Woo-hoo! fantastic yeah that was really really cool um another trick that they did i think it was called a, a stoppy they have names for all of these <gasps> tricks i love and, this and and stuff yeah um <laughs> and they did this one trick i believe it was ca- called a stoppy where they get on top of that like mound that's in the the center of the thing and they go down one of the ramps and it's right as they go down they hit the gas and then hit the hit the brake uh as fast as they can to kind of make the car stop and then go up on its front end and they balance it on the front tires wow. like a h- handstand yeah 
and they they <gasps> try and do that and they would go they would like re- re- reverse back up the ramp and then they'd switch to a wheelie w- and then on the back tires the, this time and they did all sorts of neat stuff it was a blast it was fun and we got this uh sweet commemorative monster jam <gasps> holographic cup. oh my god it was cool lithographic <laughs> Yeah. Were there any special snacks? Like, did they, I mean, did they serve onion Not rings, really. but call them truck tires or something? <laughs> I, they they might have had something. I didn't get a, a, any of the snacks. Uh, they did have merch and stuff. You could get hats. You could get T-shirts. I think at some of the bigger events, you can also get, like, replica helmets and their, like, huh. uh, that, I, I, I don't want to say uniform, but they're, like, Pil- not not pilots yeah, they're like drivers crew jacket yeah yeah but it's the like coveralls that they they ah yeah wear um but yeah i had a blast this was fantastic it was a lot I, of fun this does look very fun i uh, they're doing uh, i saw some in illinois i don't know if those are parts of illinois that are closer to st louis or to chicago I don't know who in my life I could get to go with me to a monster truck rally. Probably my nephew, my adult nephew. <laughs> I, like <laughs> Just your thing, classic aunt and adult nephew outing. I have never known anyone in my life who had been to a monster jam. Like, I, I, I knew yeah. about monster tr- trucks since I was a kid, but I just didn't really think that that was a thing you went to. Right? Like, you go see sp- Lords, you go see a basketball you thought they just game. Happened. You go see a football game, <laughs> right? You thought monster truck rally would just break out once rolling into town. The meteorologist <laughs> like, like says a so. Movie, movie that just spontaneously erupts into like so- song. It just like oh right. shit, monster trucks. No, not my city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, I, like I, I, I just didn't know what to expect, and so. When the opportunity ca- came up, I was just like, "Yeah, why wouldn't I? Like, I, I, I have to yeah. go. Like, I, I feel like most people would be like that if, if they can find the t- time, would just be, be, be like, that sounds awesome. Why not? <laughs> so I do recommend getting earplugs or some oh, kind of yeah. ear protection because it is loud. Um, I'll bet." And we sat very close, very cl- cl- close up. I could throw stuff and hit the the drivers if I wanted to. Did not. So that would be rude. But <laughs> I could have. Mm-hmm. That's how close I you was. You were in the mud zone. I was in the mud zone. <laughs> uh, I want to tell you that I scrolled to the bottom of the website and there's a little section that says related sites. And these include Marvel Universe Live. Jurassic World live, Supercross live, Sesame Street live, Disney on ice. Yep. Jurassic World live tour. <laughs> it's also on there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it, it must be like the same company that puts on though, like this event also does other events. Like I know Reed Pop does a lot of the like, uh, comic cons and yeah. stuff like that they now do e3 i think they also do packs um uh, th- there, there's a few companies like that there are just these like event companies but yeah that is a weird thing to see on this site <laughs> related mm-hmm. sites marvel universe live sesame street live <laughs> <laughs> disney on ice we come near town we can bring dirt or we can bring ice exactly what will um, you do when the dirt comes to your town? Oh, man. Yeah, this was a lot of fun for sure. Highly recommend it. Go check it out. And, and, and the last thing I will say, I think uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, the driver that was driving Grave Digger, uh, Kristen Anderson, I believe was her name. I think mm-hmm. I think her father was the original driver of Grave Digger. So it's like in the family and stuff which is neat wow yes i'm looking at her page they've got a page of all the different drivers daughter of monster jam hall of famer dennis anderson uh Kristen got her chance behind the wheel of a monster jam truck in 2017 
winning her first freestyle competition in just her second event. In 2022, yeah. she became the first ever female Monster Jam Tour Series champion. Cool. I, I'm happy oh, yeah. to learn about women in monster trucks. I want to tell my yeah, niece she can grow up and drive a, a monster truck. There's quite a bit of them. And like she 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 won the like furry style competition when we, we were there because she, <laughs> she did the backflip. And that was just like, yeah, she was the only yeah. one that did the backflip. So, of, wow. co- of course. But after each event and after each uh, like they crowned the winner of each thing. There was like a TV because because these are televised. Uh, I, I don't know where exactly you can get them televised, but uh, they they are somewhere. Uh, and they, the they like r- one of them. There's like eight different ESPN channels. Who knows? Um, but they go up to interview them. And yeah, she's sitting there like, man, I'm just out here having a blast. This one goes out to all the little g- girls in the stands. Uh, like this one is for you, you know? Um, oh. So yeah, it it was good. It was a blast. Go Every time you say Monster freestyle, Jam. I am picturing the uh, ice skating events at the Winter Olympics. <laughs> you I mean, come out in your sparkliest outfit. You pick a... S- like you pick a song, you choreograph and like theme your act to that song. Just a truck <laughs> driving around in circles to Claire de Lune or something. <laughs> <laughs> they they were like there was music uh, and some of them did have like theme music like the mm. d- the Dalmatian one had the who let the dogs out. Oh, um, but the the trucks are so loud that you can't even hear the music in the basketball st- stadium, um, which is wild. And and like they they each like parked on the outer Wait a minute. edges. You yes. were you were in a basketball stadium, so you were enclosed. There was a roof. Yes. Yeah. Wow, inside, I can't indoors. picture a monster truck indoors. I thought this yeah. was like open arena. You would open think, air, but I, I, it like it was also. I mean, it's it was in the mid- middle of February, so I guess it kind of depends uh, on yeah, where you go. Yeah. It would be pretty cold, I'm sure. Yeah, like as as you get closer to nationals and stuff like that, it's like yeah, let's do it outside where the bigger events can be mm-hmm. held. Um, but yeah, that was also an interesting thing because they like. With an event like that, you have to be able to ventilate something like that quickly because yeah. all that exhaust uh, is yeah. yeah right there. But uh, they did they did a good job for sure. Awesome! I'm happy to hear it. I'm always a fan of going out to see weird specific live events. Yeah, yeah. This is like. I, this is why a few week, weeks ago I was like, you know what, Melissa, I would love to go see like a real like in Japan, go see a sumo wrestling match. Yeah. Like that'd be so much fun. Like who does that, right? Who goes to see Monster Jinji Jam? I don't know those people, but that sounds so much fun. So mm-hmm. who knows? Who knows? That was my weekend. Uh, and it was a That's blast. Excellent. It, it, especially as we are covering the Fast and the Furious, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the Fast Saga on uh, the review sh- 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 show. I get to go to Monster J- Jam. The F1 season is starting this next month. Uh, so lots of cars for me. I, we're ha- I'm halfway through. I just watched Fast Five this week. We watched no it monster last night. trucks yet. Yeah. When are, when, do we get a monster truck at any point? Is that for the final movie? Is that for Fast X Part Two? The end of the the end of the end of the road. Who knows? Who knows? I have no idea. I I doubt they'll be in an actual monster truck, but I guess you never you know. Go to space. A monster <laughs> truck's easier to get into There's than no a monster space trucks in space. <laughs> <laughs> if you could put Tej and Roman on a rocket ship, you can 
you can put Letty behind the wheel of a monster truck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that is uh, something that I I do hope they explore like more motorsport stuff. Like, is is there any kind of yeah. cameos from like an F one driver or a NASCAR d- driver rally c- a car? Who know, like. It, it, so many things you can do with a motor vehicle. I want to see them do a chase driving a, like a full motor home with a fully stocked living area in the back and stuff's flying all over the place. There you go. Yeah. Just they're trying to have their 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 tea, their, their tea crumpets. That's their rolling around. <laughs> Maybe that's what people with motor homes do in England. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, that would be wild. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we we uh, we watched Fast Five last night. So uh, I think tomorrow night is going to be us watching uh, the Fast and the Fur- Furious Six. I forget what that one is called exactly, because yeah. we're starting to get into the era where they're changing the names. It's like Fast Five, Furious Seven, The Fate of the Furious uh, and Stuff like that. So I n- 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 never know what it's supposed to be called. <laughs> it's the Fast Saga. The Fast and the Furious. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, yeah, that's that's all I kind of have on the Monster Jam stuff. Uh, Good to how know. How about we do a quick break for housekeeping? Yeah. Uh, and then when we come back, it'll be a big mishmash of stuff uh, that we got here at the end. Lots so, yeah. of little news bits. Yeah, we will be right back. Here at The Whatnots, we make multiple different shows, and a lot of hard work goes into making them, so we would love it if you check them all out. If you enjoy our shows, patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to show your support. For just a dollar a month, you can get early access to episodes, and at our $3 tier, a Patreon-exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club. You can even get a shout out and thank you on most of our shows at the $5 tier. And if you're one of our patrons already, thank you so much. It means the world to us. You can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in the whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch for video versions of the shows, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something else, head over to thewhatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. We are back. Once again, a big shout out to all of our patrons. Uh, We thank you a lot. It means a ton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Puchinski was our our pilots club uh, for the month of February. Uh, that is what you guys can get if you are a patron member at the three dollar tier over on the pilots club. And for this next month for March, CSI, the original CSI uh, is what we're g- g- going to be ta- talking about. I think that one will be a good blast from the past. Mm-hmm. Um, other Cool things we've been up to here at the Whatnots. Of course, last week here on the Captain's Log, it was all cheesecakes and remakes. Um, (laughs) Melissa read out a bunch of the cheesecakes from Cheesecake Factory. She really does like to. Yeah. Not a bunch. All of them. I didn't leave any out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's what i'm about to say you really do like listing out all I, of the I, things that I, something has I to offer re- two weeks in a row I just, you, realized, you just I just realized that tonight i did that with like all the battle pots i love yeah. to read a long list <laughs> and we also talked about international remakes of uh different movies and tv shows that that would be something you're interested in if you you have your favorite TV show remade by another country. Would you watch that? Uh, And then, of course, on the review show, we did some post-Valentine's Day spice. We watched the psychological, er, the erotic psychological thriller, The Handmaiden, uh, which is a fantastic movie. I like that one a lot. Yeah, a lot of sex. 
in that yes. one. The, the most sex I have seen in, the, or the most erotic sex. I, I don't know about m- most yeah. sex, but most yeah, erotic Yeah, I've probably seen sex. movies that had, like, comedy sex in it. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah you're right <laughs> so go check that one out uh and of, then of course i mentioned that we were also covering the fast and the furious saga uh on the review show as well that has been our end of the month special uh we started it at the end of january uh this next week we're gonna be talking about uh the second trilogy four five and six and then at the end of march uh is when we will be covering uh seven eight and nine and optional hobbs and shaw in in mm-hmm. there if you want to do all of that but of course that's in anticipation for fast x uh which i i am excited for we've seen the trailer we have a trailer reaction up uh for, 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 for that for you guys to go check out Speaking of trailer reactions, over on the reactor core, we also have a trailer reaction for the Tetris movie, uh, oh, which yeah. kind of came out of nowhere. But that one looked awesome. <laughs> go, mm-hmm. go check out our trailer reaction to that. We've actually gotten some positive feedback. Uh, one guy in the YouTube comments was like, I'm a big fan of this game. Had no idea this movie was being made like Thank you for making this. Now I'm super excited. I was like, hell yeah, dude, this is awesome. Thank um, you for learning that from us. Yeah, right. Breaking news. <laughs> the, the whatnots. <laughs> uh, we also have our reactions to The Last of Us going up each week. Uh, and then March, this next month, will also be a busy month for reactions as The Last of Us is finishing but if you still want more Pedro P- Pascal, uh, the Mandalorian is starting uh, and he, he, he's going to be in that. And then I know later in the month, uh, Melissa, you, you and I will be checking out Yellow Jackets. Uh, right. So, yeah. Lots of stuff to look forward to. But that's it for housekeeping. So enough about all of that stuff. Let's get on to this other stuff. Let's. Uh, mm mm-hmm. Let's jump right into, let me see if I have this pulled up here. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, Yankee goes to Hollywood, our, our, our favorite candle segment here. You and I both went to go see Quantum Mania this past week. So let's jump right in. Relax. Melissa. Quantum Mania. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. If it was a candle. What would it smell like? First off, the form factor of the candle, it's many little candles. This isn't a big Ah, jar candle. This is a whole pack of tea lights. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I, 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 I feel like they'd be tea lights, but they'd be like different tea lights that have holes in them. And you could get like, I, I feel, I feel like a good, like jello smell like that, but like fruit punch jello oh, smell yeah yeah would, would almost work um what what else would be a good smell uh to go in yeah i'd like i like, like, I like, I like the idea of something fruit punchy yeah ice uh, cream ice cake. cream cake yeah ice, ice cream, cream cake. cake that's it How, <laughs> why did it take so long for us to get to that point it's ice cream <laughs> cake candles it's exactly what it is um it's 31 candles for all 31 baskin robbins flavors yeah yeah that was something interesting that you told me that this is the 31st marvel movie uh and 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 it coincides with ant-man and him formerly working at baskin robbins (laughs) they got Mm. their 31 flavors amazing I had no serendipity. Idea. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but but yeah, if you guys are also in, in I guess this is extended housekeeping. We also do have a spoiler ca- cast up on Ant-Man and the yeah. Wasp Quantum Mania. So if you guys want to hear our full thoughts on that, go check that out on the reactor core as well. Um, but yeah, do, do you have anything else you want to say about Ant-Man and, and the Wasp just to tease them a little bit for our 
full thoughts? Oh, I, there's some details in this movie I really appreciate. Ways that it bookends itself and kind of bookends the first Ant-Man movie. Not mm-hmm. that this is necessarily like the conclusion. Like it's definitely open for an additional movie as many as they want in this sure, series, yeah. the additional Ant-Man and Wasp movies. But there's a lot that echoes back to the first movie in a way I really liked. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go. Uh, speaking of Marvel stuff, I, I saw this a few yes. hours ago and it took me a while to see other outlets start picking it up. So I think I found it like almost right when they reported it. Whoa. And- and and like other out outlets were out there trying to d- 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 double check uh, stuff. But apparently Steven Yoon is reportedly has reportedly been cast in Marvel's Thunderbolts uh, as a yet undisclosed role. We don't know who he's playing yet, uh, but this is coming from the he's Hollywood supposed to reporter. be a villain. Did did they say villain? I. I think that's what I heard on New Rock Stars today is that he was going to be or maybe are, are, maybe are I'm inventing that he's a vid, 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 vid. well that's yeah that might be a theory and not like an actual statement yeah I mean that's the thing with the Thunderbolts too like what was so great about the comic when it came out is that it was a team trying to pose as heroes but they were all just a bunch of villains. And like when you found out that they were all v- v- villains in disguise, it was just like, whoa, I didn't know that. And that was the big, like, mind blowing mm. yeah. moment. So, it, it, yeah, would make sense that he's playing a villain. But there's some, something we don't know exactly. So, uh, yeah, who knows? But um, would make sense that he is playing some kind of Marvel villain. Guess who here. knows i mean there's like the the cast of protagonists is already huge i would i would imagine like villain is the role yet to be filled <laughs> but whatever he's up to i'm very excited to see him in this world uh, i absolutely. think he can do a lot of different things absolutely i i really don't know what to expect with this movie at all um yeah, or or who he might be playing. Like I, I, I just like this is another one of the like Marvel projects that they are kind of. I, I wouldn't say this one's as obscure as like the Guardians of the Galaxy were or stuff like that. Like Thunderbolts has a a more uh, prevalent is that is that the right word name? It's it's not a household, but just more well known. Yeah. name within marvel comics um but i yeah i just don't i don't know what to expect w- with this one but he's a fantastic actor uh i i he he can do god i i would love to see him just be the the weirdest little character that he can be i would love to see him just <sighs> chew the scenery and in, in stuff i'd love to see um, him be weird at any size yeah <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun indeed um i don't really know i don't have much else to say about that one uh-oh melissa's ca- camera I, fell off of the the face i, of the I earth accidentally here. bumped her, it uh, <laughs> i am trying in. to plug it back in hold on melissa's upset that i have nothing else to say about steven yoon and the thunderbolts that she just oh, gave am up. i back <laughs> i'm here aren't i hello I yes now you are back there we go <laughs> um yeah so I I think next up on our list here uh this is an inter- interesting one because we've we've talked about a, a TV adaption of this before with a different name attached um mm. back on the review show Melissa you and I covered a comic book something is killing the children um, which is by James Tinian the Fourth and Werther Deladera, I believe is the artist's name. I could be getting that wrong, uh, but it, it, fantastic book. Highly recommend it. The art is mm-hmm. gorgeous. Uh, that book is awesome. They've already started coming out with like spinoffs of of that book to explore that world even more. It's a personal f- favorite of mine for sure. Uh, 
uh, it, it was like a year ago ish. I don't remember exactly. It was a while ago. I think I hadn't moved yet. I was still back in Virginia when we were talking about that first adaption. And Mike Flanagan was uh, a, a oh yeah to, to that's work right. On this I think it was like his production company or something. Um, but that must have fallen apart. Uh, because Netflix has tapped uh, Baran Bo uh, uh, Adar and Jante Faris uh, to adapt Something is Killing the Ch Children for Netflix. And if you don't know their names, you probably know their work. On Netflix, they did D -D 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 Dark and 1899. Dark is fantastic. Yes. 1899, they swung for the fences. Yeah. And I, I don't know if they're enough of like a household name for pe people to really like stick with them. And so I think Netflix got scared and canceled the show when it was starting to get not the best reviews. And it was just like, we don't know where this is going. It's weird. What's happening here? I don't understand. I think if they had had three seasons of that show, it would have been really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but dark especially all time favorite yes. of mine loved it and also work. covered that on the review show incredible what do you think of them taking on something that's killing the ch children <laughs> melissa i think this is a very good match they are already in much like mike flanagan they're already in the netflix house mm -hmm. i think this might be I don't know, maybe an even more appropriate style match. Not that I know Mike Flanagan very well, unfortunately. I haven't watched much of any of those. I'm, I'm getting to it. But there's something as dark as dark truly is. Like, it is a grim, serious, solemn show. But there's something so lavish about the style of it. Like, it's so moody. It's so atmospheric. It's so eerie. And I think that's going to be a great match for how stylistic everything is killing the children is as a comic. Like they're both really visually striking and like really sort of immerse you in where the story is. Yeah. So I think I think you take those creators with that subject matter. That could really be something special. And I think it's so funny that it's like a, a, a property we're excited about and like creators we're excited about like this seems like something we dreamt just for us yeah just for yeah. me like two, two of my <laughs> favorites right yeah um yeah what, what's really interesting it like i don't know what I, how involved mike flanagan was going to be in that first uh mm -hmm. adaption that they were tr tr trying to make um I, I'm I'm wondering if it was just like the the direction they wanted to go that they weren't being they weren't sold exactly on yet, because um, I, I, I think very easily you could say, oh, this is like a monster, like it's monsters. You can just make this like a monster maybe. But that's also not really what this is and no. what it's about, especially when you include the spinoff comics that are like exploring this world more. It's kind of more so about this like secret society, this this almost like gr this, this group yeah. of monster hunters that are more cult like in the sense that they all have these bandanas that they wear different color band to JJ Dana's represent your like job within the cult. Um, like I, I don't know which one's which, so don't quote me on this, but like all the red ones are hackers mm. and they do all of the it to, <laughs> to like keep this secret society actually secret and mm. stuff like that. Whereas like the ones who have the black band, JJ Dana's, those are the hunters and they go out and hunt these monsters uh, or uh, the ones in white, they're also hunters, but they hunt in pa in in a pack or s something like mm. that. There's there's all these different kind of gr groups within the secret society, and I think that oddly fits, especially with dark. Like there 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 yeah. was this just real thick, creepy atmosphere, and the generations of the families in that show almost lends itself to this like cult like mentality 
of, of mm-hmm. so, yeah i'm 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 interested to see what they do here but uh that was just announced today like uh, a cut like an hour or two before we started recording here so i'll believe it when i see it because this almost sounds too good to be true for me yeah. heart, <laughs> right yeah so i'm excited <sighs> about that though uh-huh Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, as far as like news bits go, that's about all we have. I, I do have two I... kind of co- questions to wrap things up here, though. I do have one little news bit. I didn't think go to like it. officially yeah. get a link and throw this in the dock. But at Disneyland, they are making a live stage show out of Rogers the Musical from Hawkeye. It's not going to be that's like cool. full musical length. I imagine it'll be like 30 to 50 minutes, but they are going to add on to it and you can go see it in. I I forget if it's going to be in Disneyland or if like it's probably going to be in California Adventure next to where Avengers Campus is. And I'm so excited that with all the other performance things you can go see there, like you can see like Adora Milaje sort of like a procession where they've got their like uh like, like like bow staffs that they're pounding on the ground and they're doing twirls and twists uh-huh. and you can see like a doctor strange like summoning show with some magic in it you can see the stunt show with like the robotic spider-man that flips around i love that rogers the musical is joining all of that you get to have a real nice sit down live musical theater experience you know what would be really interesting is if they 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 still mix some of that like performative magic and those c- crazy stunt robots into mm. the production of that. Like, you know how in, in Hawkeye they had uh, uh, Iron Man like up there. Like, they, they like almost yeah. had him like on ropes up there just being like, and yeah. I was here too. Like, what if he does a thing where he like spins back behind something and then he takes off it like in his yeah right there? That'd be that'd be neat. Or like. <laughs> How would you still go see it if it was all animatronic? Oh, like a Chuck E. Cheese band? Yeah, but it was it was it was them out there like acting and dancing and singing their songs. I I want to go to Tone E. Cheese's uh, pizza and avenging parlor. Tony Entertainment (laughs) Cheese. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it's just the Avengers and they like play like Hulk's back there on the drums and they're like, yeah, we avenge. But in our spare time, you know, after we've defeated the Chitauri, we like to hang out and have fun and jam cool tunes. (laughs) Take it away, Clint. (laughs) 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 That'd be funny. Um, God, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> that, that would be a blast. One day I, I absolutely want to go, go out there mm-hmm. and experience all of that stuff. It's like so much fun. Uh, I have a question for you though. Uh huh. When was the last time that you watched a film where the reason for you watching this f- f- film was to educate yourself on cinema? Right. Like you like specifically either like sought out this movie in particular or this director and was like, you know what? I've heard a lot about this d- director or I, I haven't seen any of the, the, the works, but I need to e- educate myself. When was the last time you did that? I do that a lot. I, <laughs> I watch a lot of movies and I operate on a lot of goals like the Blank Check podcast is an easy way that I can sort of watch along and and learn a lot about a director. Like right now yeah. they're doing Danny Boyle. So I watched Sunshine. I watched Slumdog Millionaire. I'd never seen any of his movies before. My dad inexplicably owned a DVD copy of The Beach. So I'm going to watch The Beach sometime this next week. There you go. Okay. So okay. I, I learned that way. Uh, I often watch, a, sometimes... I watch along with the podcast. I don't do all of them, but it has gotten me to get to movies. I never would have, that would have maybe taken me a lot longer to get to on my own time. Like 
Well, it's the D- Zemeckis series. They're talking about Death Becomes Her next week. I'd better watch Death Becomes Her because it's here on HBO Max and I can do it really easily. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, I I do stuff like that every now and then. I I, I find myself doing it with more of like a... I don't know, not necessarily a specific director in mind, but being like, if I were to go in, into a film studies class, like who mm-hmm. like who would be the like early filmmakers that they would like? That's how I, I went to go watch like Citizen Kane or I was like, you know what? I should go watch more Kurosawa movies. Yeah. And see like more beyond the like, oh, I recognize the reference to Seven's Samurai like that that the, the, right like yeah. i i know that that plot <laughs> um and and i i was thinking about that cuz i i kind of did that on accident this p- past week um i forget i forget how i ended up on his work but yashihiro o- o- ozu uh is an mm-hmm. old japanese d- 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 director and uh so somehow i stumbled upon er no i i think it was hbo max i found uh like a series of these old movies entitled like early spring late summer early fall right and i was just like what are these they, they're like all some kind of series and then i looked them up and yeah i found that that the director was yashihiro uh, 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 ozu uh and i just read a little bit about him and that how he's like a super influential director and he often did these certain techniques. And uh, so I ended up watching a movie called early spring, um, which was an interesting one. It's from, I I want to say like late fifties, I believe. Um, But it's just Mm. a little slice of life romance. Um, A father and his daughter. She's kind of at that age where everyone is like, you need to hurry up and get married. You're getting old, even though you're only like 22. Um, And he, you know, he's in his 50s. His first wife died. He's like, maybe I need to remarry like that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff there. And his movies are a lot of um, like like post-war Japan, like dealing with life and the changes in life and stuff like that um but i guess one of the interesting things he does in his films is that when there's a scene between two characters talking instead of doing that like over the shoulder shot which he still does every now and then but he likes to put the camera in between them and have them look directly into the camera when they speak and it just switches back and forth um huh and 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 it's it's interesting because it does a couple different things one it like depending on the subject matter it can make you the viewer feel very uncomfortable because it looks like the actor is talking to you like they they are looking directly in the camera and so you just watch them like speak straight into that and then you're like you're you're speaking to me oh my god right um (laughs) But then, like, I don't know if it was on pur- on purpose, like, if this was the direct the direction that he was giving these characters or if that's just how they acted. But at least in this one movie, it almost felt like some of these characters, like, had a secret. Like, it felt like <sighs> they knew something that you didn't. And I-, I-, I don't know, like, it was not a sinister movie. There was no mystery to it or what happened, but it was just... I don't know. It was it was interesting. Like it was not a movie I would normally watch on my own. Like the subject matter and the little description of the plot was just like, eh, not for me. But I I ch- I checked it out and it was actually not bad. So valuable. I that TCM section on HBO Max with all the old movies in it. That is a all really the great resource. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's fan- fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. I think I've even watched some that had the little Ben Mankiewicz like from TCM introductory videos. Those are cool. Right. right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, that was just a, a, a question that popped in into my head there of like how like yeah. I, I do that every so, so often. I was like, how how often do other people 
do this. I'm just like, you know what? I, I need like little film studies 101. Let me go watch Citizen Kane, right? Let me go watch To Kill a <laughs> Mockingbird. Let me go watch uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, right? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I do it fairly often. Uh, I've got a, like homework for this podcast, homework for Saturday morning obscurities. Like I've got a lot of different challenges I have to meet, but like one of them is like I'll watch like at least a couple movies from blank check, whatever director they're covering. I'm trying to follow along with the Oscars and like Oscar right. buzzy movies, just like big things out of the year. And I watch a lot of YouTube videos about film. Like um, I found a channel called the cinema cartography that's done some really interesting essays. They're pretty dry and academic i say dry only to let you know that the, the like there's no like jokes or snarky bits or anything in these there's sometimes no i wish they had a joke but they're truly right. they're, like they're, they're not sitting lectures. there like whoa, watching batman slap robin uh right. <laughs> like, like that there <laughs> yep no no memes no jokes uh but they i watched a really interesting like two and a half hour long like the 20 best films ever made list and the, what they picked and like how they ordered it was they had a a good argument for whatever it was they were doing. There were a couple more popular things in there. Like Akira was in there and Akira was in fact the thumbnail is so it's stuff like that. I've heard of you got a citizen Kane in there, but also like really interesting like foreign artsy films i've never heard of before you'll have to send like, me also, that list yeah I, I, I would love to check that out because that was that's what i was kind of exploring uh or what 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 made me more interested to watch it as, as like as i was reading up a little bit on o- ozu they were like yes mm-hmm. some of his work is like up there in the like top 100 like most influential films of all t- t- time and i was like huh i've never heard of this guy yeah uh this channel also is a video called the essential japanese cinema uh i started watching it i'm not done yet but it's talking about like the different sort of genres and flavors and like eras in japanese cinema like the period dramas the sort of real small quiet slice of life stuff uh, I'm learning a lot Ozu from this would channel. Head in the small slice yeah. of life stuff. Yeah, I watch them. Um, I'm I'm getting more into Patrick H. Willems. Patrick H. Willems just did a really interesting, like hour and a half long video that he originally designed as a class. That is how to I appreciate and like, yeah, how to like how to analyze and talk film? about cinema. Yeah. I started it. I haven't watched it. I saw it on Twitter one day. I was like, let me like this so I can bookmark that. That looked interesting. It's great. And I really like that his example movie he keeps coming back to is Home Alone. Like it's a movie we've all seen a ton of times. We all know very well. We like it. But he really breaks down like how technically and like structurally well crafted Home Alone is. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I like those channels. I like um, the Royal Ocean Film Society. That might be my favorite one. The like vi- graphic design on that channel is outstanding. I'll have to go check. Yeah, I, I'm always trying to learn more about cinema. I wish I did have more time for more uh, research into older things. Like I love stage musical so much and there's all these older musical movies that i just haven't gotten around to watching yet i don't like yeah. unless it has come to my local theater i don't know that musical and there's some of the older ones that just haven't cycled through in recent years so i'm like i don't know what an american in paris is maybe i should watch that movie and learn what he does when he goes <laughs> to paris good stuff good stuff uh, but this last thing I got is less of an actual question, but I think uh, something I plan to do in the near future, my local th- theater, like at like once a week on Mondays, they have their like mystery movie Monday where they Whoa. just have a theater playing a random movie. You don't know what it is uh, and you can buy tickets and go check it out. 
Uh, and I think I think my girlfriend and I might do that in the near future. Just be like, sign us up. We'll uh, we'll check out wh whatever it is. Um, Are there parameters? Like, is it a movie that's been released in the last year? Do they give you any sort of category? Like, of. this is a comedy. This is a horror. Not that I know of. It just, like, yeah, I, oh. I, I don't know if it's like of the stuff that we have out right now. It, it might be that. It yeah. Might, yeah. They might have a big old catalog of stuff. Who knows? Um, but we <laughs> we like it's on the like Regal app that you can get your <gasps> tickets on fun. and stuff. And we were like, we should do that sometime. Just <gasps> I'd love just that. Go watch a random movie. So I, I love surprises, but also I love theming things. And I can't theme something to a mystery like. What do I wear? What do I eat? <laughs> right. <laughs> what kind of cheesecake do I get afterwards at the right. Cheesecake Factory? I don't know. I, <laughs> I legitimately think about these things. You've seen my nails. Why are my nails purple? Because the, all the purple quantum mania energy. Like I see every little thing go. to whatever it is I'm going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Like, I do want to uh, start a movie and I bring like Reese's cups or something. And then I start watching and I'm like, oh, this is a Twizzlers film. <laughs> Twizzlers sponsored this film. Dang it. Oh, now I feel like speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of which, I've got a question for you. Yes. Mull on this for next week. Lately, I've really been wanting to go to the local Italian restaurant, the pasta house, and then go home and watch like good fellas or something <laughs> like watching mm -hmm. a movie where they eat a lot of Italian food. And I was trying to think of what movies are restaurants like, like what is the ideal movie and restaurant pairing for different restaurants I know and like, mm. and I want you to think about what movie is Chili's. That's what I was. I was, I was already thinking it before you said it. Like, are you someone who enjoys spending four hours in shit? In right. What's the movie for that? <laughs> that well, think about it thing. for it's different like, things, please. Chili's. It, it, it's one of those restaurants that has a little bit of everything, right? So you need to go with something like The Princess Bride or or a movie mm. similar to that. That had like it has your comedy, it has your romance, it has your action, it has your drama, right? Like it has your fairy tale stuff, like all of that good good stuff. And like, you you can you can take your pick. I Chili's might be Babylon. You're there for 3 hours and 10 minutes. It's chaos. It's loud. <laughs> what is any of this doing here? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's that's I, an interesting thing. I've I there's on a it, lot please. of podcasts out there that also like to do the like wine pairings with yeah. different stuff, right? We could, we could do restaurant pairings with different movies that I, we watch. <laughs> I love to do this. I love everything like this. We should just like design a <laughs> meal. Uh, and decide, well, what movie is that? If you go to Taco Bell and you get a Crunchwrap Supreme <laughs> and like a pack of the little Cinnabon bites, what's that? <laughs> what do you watch while you eat Who that? Knows? Who knows? What do you do? That's a good question. Maybe we'll have to do something like that for our uh, end of the year. Formerly known as retrospective, currently known as end of the year <laughs> Grand Prix. Uh, the whatnots grand prix uh <laughs> go watch the captain's log from like two weeks ago <laughs> uh yeah we might have to do something like that because it's similar to how you did your like end of the year playlist for a few mm. years what if we do like you like you you independently have to pick restaurants to match up three of the things that we covered and i have to pick let's three to do Let's design like a tasting board, like a snack platter, mm. like a charcuterie okay, tray okay. for all the film and TV and stuff. We've talked about that year. Restaurant charcuterie. OK, OK, I'm down for that. That sounds good. Sounds good. 
Well, Melissa, I say we wrap things up right there. Mm -hmm. Call it a night for this here podcast. Uh, so where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. There you go. Uh, if you guys want to follow me, I am at Yo Kyle Springer. And if you guys would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are, of course, at The Whatnots. Uh, so please go like, share, and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. If you're watching the YouTube version of this, go check out one of our other videos over there on that side. That would help us out as well. Y'all know the deal with that one. Uh, but yeah, this has been uh, number 224 of the Cat Log. We will see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.